Deputy Speaker, and um, it's a great honour to speak on the condolence motion for uh, Malcolm Fraser, a former Prime Minister, a humanitarian, a person who uh, was engaged in the absolute central issues of the last half century in Australia, but also a constituent of uh, the electorate of Flinders, uh, somebody I knew and uh, would regard as uh, a friend and uh, a great family man. I uh, have had the honour and the pleasure of knowing Tammy Fraser and Malcolm. Uh, also, uh, curiously, his, daughter, his granddaughter Storm is the teacher for my five-year-old son. And so, uh, uh, you know, his engagement with the electorate of Flinders and the people of Flinders, uh, not just as a former prime minister of this country, but as a constituent and a resident and as the scion of a, a truly great family, um, is very deep. Uh, against that background, let me begin by acknowledging uh, his life and his family. Uh, he, Tammy Fraser, his four children, including Phoebe, whom I've met along the way, his grandchildren, including Storm, uh, and acknowledging uh, their loss. But of course, his network of friends was dramatically wider as somebody in such a prominent and unique role in Australia's life uh, gathers uh, and accumulates over the course of uh, 84 years. Uh, my father also knew Malcolm Fraser very well. They were um, at school. Um, I think they were a couple of years apart, and uh, they uh, had a long-standing relationship, and indeed through the work of the Constitutional Conventions in the 1970s, they worked together on constructive issues in relation to multicultural affairs, and they worked together on constructive issues in relation to uh, making the Federation be a more effective unit. Um, against that, let me say that uh, there are three things which most distinguish Malcolm Fraser. Um, his courage, his conviction and his compassion. In terms of his courage, that was undoubted. Uh, at a time of immense instability and uncertainty in Australia in the 1970s, he stepped forward. And there can be no doubt as to the degree of controversy, the uh, the strength of feelings that were present in the nation. I have, I have to say that uh, the night after the Australia Day riot of 2012, in which the then Prime Minister Gillard was uh, swept away by the Australian Federal Police, lost her shoe in the process, and this was a major public issue, I happened to be at a very small dinner with Malcolm and Tammy Fraser and, uh, and a few other people. And uh, Mr Fraser, remarked that it uh, hadn't really been that large a, uh, a fracas or an incident and uh, was perhaps surprised at the way in which the threat had been perceived to the then Prime Minister, with no reflection on the Prime Minister, more to the fact that uh, the, the media and some security forces had perhaps overreacted in his view, not that I necessarily share that. And uh, to which Tammy Fraser replied, that wasn't a riot. In our day, we saw real riots, and they really wanted to kill Malcolm. And uh, just that sense of good humour about the past, but also that recognition that uh, whatever tensions we feel in domestic Australian politics today uh, do tend to pale to the enormity of events and the, the extraordinary pressures of uh, 1975 and the years that followed. Without trying to relitigate history, I think the best way to understand that history is to return to the judgment of the people at the time. In 1975, following the events of uh, the dismissal, the Australian people gave Malcolm Fraser and the coalition government the largest majority, the greatest victory, the most significant win of any federal election since Federation. Only two and a bit years later, uh, in 1977, there was a second election victory, which was the second largest since Federation. And so, whilst historians may 
debate. The people of Australia decided in their way at the ballot box, not just once but twice. And of course Malcolm Fraser went on to win a third election in 1980. But it's more than just that. It's the measure of what you do with your time. And in particular, given my current role and uh, the fact that the member for Wentworth is also at the, uh, at the table as a former environment minister, I want to acknowledge Malcolm Fraser's environmental achievements. He established Kakadu National Park. He banned drilling on the Great Barrier Reef. He pro proclaimed the Great Barrier Reef as a marine park. He oversaw the inscription of the Great Barrier Reef on the World Heritage List. Um, and he ended the practice of whaling in Australia with the enactment of the Whale Protection Act. Uh, only, uh, uh, only this week I uh, met with the Cetaceans Working Group, which is a, a group of uh, uh, NGO leaders who are involved in uh, whale and dolphin protection. And um, they asked sp specifically if I could acknowledge their thanks for Mr Fraser's work in helping to end the practice of whaling in Australia. Project Jonah and so many other groups regard this as a wonderful Australian environmental achievement which bespoke a great deal of humanity. Beyond the courage and the achievements in the environment was the conviction. And his conviction in human rights was clear and undoubted. He championed the Aboriginal land rights movement, enacted the Aboriginal Land Rights Northern Territory Act. He established the Human Rights Commission, established the Australian Refugee Advisory Council. Uh, he reversed the position in relation to Vietnamese refugees inherited from uh, previ uh, previous governments. He oversaw the enactment of Australia's first Freedom of Information Act and internationally there was no doubt he played a fundamental role uh, in arguing the case against apartheid and, in particular, uh, through the Glen Eagles Agreement, helped to end racial discrimination in sport. And then there was his compassion. And after retiring from politics in 1983, um, he served for 15 years as chair of uh, Care Australia. And so in that role, he oversaw its place in the world. Um, and this included a five-year stint, uh, stint as president of Care International. And this was simply about assisting those who were the least fortunate, the worst off, and in the most need. And uh, he didn't have to do that. It was something which he chose, which he sought, which, uh, to which he committed himself, and for, through which he delivered real and lasting human and humanitarian outcomes for those that were assisted by Care Australia and Care International. And then, against all of that, um, I want to acknowledge uh, the time that I had spent with him as a Liberal member in which there, uh, for a seat in which there was a former Prime Minister of your own party, um, the third longest serving Liberal Prime Minister, the fourth longest serving Australian Prime Minister. I felt it was uh, a duty and a responsibility and an honour to work with him. Um, from time to time I sought his uh, advice on different matters. We may not have always agreed, but I always respected the integrity of his views and he was always immensely gracious with me and uh, I appreciated that. Uh, and I remember visiting his house, seeing him in Melbourne, seeing him at, in the office and at events. And, uh, his focus was uh, crystal clear. It was always crystal clear. And so I want to uh, say to Tammy, I thank you for uh, Malcolm's guidance to me personally, his service to the nation, and uh, I uh, acknowledge the immense loss that as a family, Tammy, you, your children and your grandchildren uh, have. He served our country at the highest level uh, he left an indelible mark. He was one of the giants of Australian politics, Vale Malcolm Fraser. I think